Hello, um, today we're going to be talking about the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and looking at the thermal calculation so that we can see that water is actually one of the products and not H2 gas. So uh, that's something that's common. A lot of people say, oh, hydrogen peroxide decomposes to hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and that's actually not true. It decomposes to water and oxygen, and we know that um, because we actually see it. A bottle of hydrogen peroxide doesn't lose any volume as it's decomposing, but what you have is weaker and weaker hydrogen peroxide until it's just all water. So let's take a look at the thermal calculations. Um, but first let's look at uh, the reaction and we're going to speed it up using a catalyst. We're also going to put soap in the container so that the soap will capture the gas and allow us to visualize what is actually happening with the equation. So from the video, you can see that the students were holding their hands over the, um, the experiment, and it was very hot. So it was an exothermic reaction, and uh, that means that the system loses energy to the surroundings, and um, the products are more stable than the reactants because the energy is being given off. And, uh, go, and being released, the excess energy is released into the environment. Now, we'd like to look at what the gas, what gas is in the bubbles, would it be hydrogen gas or oxygen gas? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna light a splint and then let the glowing splint go into the bubbles. If it were hot, uh, hydrogen, it would cause a little bit of an explosion. If it were oxygen, it just supports the stick, the combustion of the stick, and the stick would glow even brighter. So let's take a look. So from this we can see that oxygen gas really filled the soap bubbles and it supports our prediction that oxygen gas is formed and not hydrogen gas. So let, now let's calculate the delta H of the reaction and see if our calculations agree with our prediction. The bond energies for the HO bond in peroxide would be 374 kilojoules per mole per bond. The HH bond is 436 and we'll use that a little later. The O double bond O is 498 kilojoules per mole, and the O single bonded to O for the peroxide is 214. So what we're going to do is add up all the reactants and the bond energies of all the products. Now the bond energies for the reactants are going to be positive because 
They take energy in to break the bonds, so we have four OH bonds and two OO bonds, and the bond energies for the products are going to be exothermic, so we're going to indicate that by putting a negative in front, although it's not a negative number, it just means that the bond energy is going to be released as the new bonds are formed. So we have four OH bonds, but they're water bonds, so they're a little bit more stable, and we have um, 498 kilojoules per mole for the oxygen double bond. Once we add everything up, we see that it's negative 426 kilojoules per mole. And that's the reason that it was so hot above that reaction. And also, steam was given off. So the water got so hot, it actually evaporated into the air. Um, heat of evaporation is, um, it does take in some heat for the water to evaporate, but there was so much more energy generated from this exothermic reaction that it, it allowed all the water to evaporate, so there wasn't any water left. Now, does this validate our observation? Absolutely. We saw that it was an exothermic reaction, and now we calculated how much. But what about if H2 were one of the products? So let's just calculate that just to see if that prediction would even be possible. So what would delta H be if the products were H2 and O2? So we have hydrogen peroxide decomposing to H2 and O2. We have the delta H for the reactants. So we have two OH bonds from the peroxide and one OO bond from the peroxide. Then we have one HH bond for the products and one double bonded O in the products. So taking the bond energies from the previous slide, we see two times 374 plus 214, and then exothermic reaction bonds would be the HH bond, so that would be negative 436, and the O double bonded O would be negative 498. When we add all those up, we see that we have uh, 28 kilojoules per mole, and this is positive, meaning that this reaction would be predicted to be endothermic. So we should see the environment get cooler as the energy had to go into the system, and that's not what we saw. And also, another thing about um, the reaction being spontaneous is that the fact that it's exothermic is a good indicator that it's more spontaneous because the products have less energy than the reactant started out with. So thermodynamically, if we can give energy off, it's more likely that it'll be spontaneous. So the equation that supports what we saw in our observations and our calculations would be that the products, the two products of hydrogen peroxide are water and oxygen gas. Thank you. Have a great day.